the crib thing, I really, 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 has, it's done nothing but do great things for me. But at the same time, bro, it, it has been a, a real deep deal. I mean, it's, um, you know, to, you know, live with five different people and get along with everybody and everything. And it's, it's been, to me, it's been kind of fun. But at the same time, I can see to them, it's getting, it's getting a little, they're getting a little wore out. And um, to the point of saying things like, you know, we had our second round table meeting the other day. And um, that's a deal that I actually came up with over uh, friends of mine that, you know, um, uh, moved into my house with me after my first divorce. And in six months, me and my best friends were at each other's throats. And so I'd be, I'd come home from the road trips and go, you know, I'd be hearing, well, Mike didn't put the toilet paper back on the toilet paper thing. And, and Jamie closes the dryer door too hard. We're still asleep. And I mean, just knickknack, pity whack, stupid things. And I said, look, dude, here's what we're going to do. I can't hear about this all the time. I can't do it. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to write down whatever your problems are. And then once a week, we're going to have what's called, I'm going to call it the round table. Okay. Okay. That way we're able to get everything out, you know, professionally, you know, adult like, um, not like, you know, a bunch of babies that are arguing. And and it and it took a six and a half month thing that was almost over into a four year deal. We all lived together, and uh, so it was the best. I mean, to this day, you can go all three guys, including me being four. And I'll tell you, it was one of the best times ever. It, it is the best time I've ever had in my entire life. And that was and, four. That was four years. Yeah, yeah, four years. Now, it's not going to be four years of DDP's uh, accountability crib, I presume. Ah, uh, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. To the point where they're talking about doing a June, um, like an extra month. And for some reason, I don't know why, uh, Dallas wants me to really be there, you know, seven days a week. And I said, Dallas, I said, <laughs> Bro, I've got, you know, X amount of dollars, which is a lot, in the month of June. Not to mention, if I did say I didn't want to do it, with the, with, I, I didn't want to do the, the appearances, we're talking about, I'd have to send two or $3,000 back to, and deposits. I had to send... A couple thousand dollars back in airline tickets and Dallas acted like it just like went right over his head and he's like you know but man I don't want you to make a mistake and, and I said Dallas let's be honest bro I said this has been phenomenal for me absolutely phenomenal and I thank you and I appreciate it but what you've asked me to do, which is get along with everybody, I said, it's become not a daily basis anymore. It's become an hourly basis. And I said, and it's just too much, bro. It's too much. I said, so even if you guys wanted me for June, he goes, well, let me call him. I said, Dallas, of all people, you know as good as I do, your name's not going to be mentioned, and I'm going to be the one that gets buried. I said, because, you know, of where I'm at right now in my walk of, of sobriety, I said, so there's no way that's going to work. And he's like, oh, yes, yes, it will. Yes, it will. I said, Dallas, no, it won't. I said, it ain't going to come out. Hey, Dallas Page said, it's going to come out. Hey, 
Marcus Buff Bagwell canceled on us. And that's just the facts. <clears throat> and it ain't worth the chances as hard as I've built to get myself back in good graces with fans and, and everybody else and having fun again and everybody loving me and me loving them. It's just not worth it. And I said, Dallas, I said, this, this train ride's over, bro. I said, I mean, this is no, no offense to anybody, but we've got two women that are one's 270 and God, read, God bless her. She's said, you know, 67, 68 years old. Uh, but she's, but still, she's 270. Um, we got another girl that's absolutely beautiful. Her name's CC, absolutely gorgeous. But still, she's 300 pounds. I, you know, another 30 days is not going to make everybody where everybody goes, wow, that did it, you know. All right, let's you know let's let's move on here. That that's what did it. We needed that thirty extra days. It, it just isn't. It's not. And I hate that for Dallas. I hate it for for me being. I don't know why. I just can't stay the same. Um, I mean, we've been doing it the whole time. I leave on the weekends to go do my independent shows for money, and then all of a sudden he comes up with. Well, you don't really need the money right now. And I go, whoa, 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 bro. Huh? Well, what do you mean I don't need the money right now? And so it's been kind of a, a nicely, a nice argument that me and Dallas are trying to come up with to make it make sense. But I literally have to work 20 four seven to get along with me and Butterbean are great me and CC are great but with Mildred she's a little bit rough and I, you know me I ain't gonna put up with it and as soon as she shoots out and out kind of snappy I'm gonna come right back with something snappy and it's going to be better. And I don't want to do that, but she's leaving me no avenues out of it. Like the other day, I coughed. I went, <clears throat> just like that. And she went, oh, God, now we got two people coughing in the house. And I said, do you not have enough problems to worry about i said you got 267 hanging off of your rear i go can't you just worry about you and of course she goes oh so it's going to be one of those kind of days and i go no it's going to be whatever day you choose with me baby i said i I said, this, none of this faces me. I said, I'm ready to go right now to have a great day. I said, but don't act like it's me picking the bad day. It's you picking the bad day. This and is I recent? Said, this was recent? Oh, this is three days ago. Three days ago, okay. Yeah, so I said, look, I said, I'm not going to, you know, act like, you know, that this is all good and everything's going great when it's not. I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. I'm not. A, I'm not a liar. I'm not a. You know, trying to you know make it sound good when it's not. I'm going to tell the truth. I to put, yeah. But but to put in perspective now for the listeners, you know, again, this is you being in the accountability crib, uh, DDP's accountability crib with the tapings. I can't speak to Butterbean. I can't speak to CC. I can't speak to Mildred. But looking at you, seeing you physically and mentally, I don't know about their changes. Some people only change physically. Some only change mentally. Buff, Mark, the proof's in the pudding, man. You've never been in better shape at 52, man. Never been a more sound mind. Like, you are the shining example of the accountability crib. Like, and I think that's, that's the game plan. You're the star, man. 
And, th and that's, that's where I told Dallas, I said, Dallas, little brother, I said, listen to me, I lost 30 pounds in 14 days at the very beginning. There was only two guys to do that. Only two people to do that. And it was me and Butterbean. We lost 30 pounds. Now, he was there to lose weight. I really wasn't. I knew I could lose weight because I knew because of being buff back, I want to have an action figure with, with a 10-pack, not an 8-pack, a 10-pack, you know, of abs. I knew I could do that part of it. And I did in 14 days, I lost 30 pounds, still continue to the next weigh-in to lose 10 more. So I'm 228, bro, from 268. And so, you know, and that even what I was there for. But along that came with a lot of knowledge from Dallas, tremendous amount of, you know, working with the family, him asking me to please work hard to work with the family to make it work. And it's like, you know, nobody else really is putting in the effort that I am. Now, do I want to go, well, I'm not either. No, I don't do that. I still say, hey, I'm going to put it, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to put it in because Dallas asked me to. But at the same time, I can't sign on to another month and having to babysit and cradle every single girl, because me and Butterbean are good, the girls, I can't, I, I, I can't, I, I can't do it. I just can't. I can't have Mildred go, oh, Lord, you're coughing. You know, mind your own business. You've got an ice pack on each knee. You've got 270 pounds to deal with. I said, I realize you're 67. That's a hard goal, but just almost the words of don't throw rocks in glass houses. Just, just worry about you. And she is so big about worrying about everybody else. If everybody else has ate their greens, if everybody else has done what they're supposed to do, I go, baby, you're 270. Worry about you, baby girl. Mark, we can't wait. We can't wait to watch this, man. When it comes out, it's going to be fire. I can tell you, I've never seen one single second of it because it's all under key, uh, lock and key, but it is going to come, obviously. This documentary oh, I, series, thousand percent. Absolutely thousand percent now that being said you know your most precious commodity is your time you know at the end of the day and i can tell you as a lawyer the hardest negotiations are when you make an agreement between two sides and then somebody comes back to the table and says yeah i need to re renegotiate this now and that's where you had one set of expectations going into it right or wrong like that's you and dallas talked about it we, we signed yeah. a deal right he did admit that he said look he goes there's no heat there's no you guys signed on for 90 days. Um, what Dallas don't realize is, is Butterbean is going to come out with the same thing that I come out with. And I love Butterbean. And if this is calling him out, if this is calling him out, it's calling him out. I, well, if I got to tell you, man, it feels like you've been in there for 900 days, man. I don't remember you not being in there and you're the one living it. and I'm not. And I feel like you've been in there for 900 days already. <laughs> I feel like I've been in there 900 days because of the uncomfortability. I, I mean, bro, they keep their house, the accountability crib, yeah. on 73 degrees. Yes, everything they say is right, which is stuff like you run hot, you're hot blooded. Yes, they're right, but still, they can put a small jacket on, a small little thin little jacket of some sort on. I can't peel my skin off. 
So I told Dallas to his face, I said, bro, I said, this is not only just me trying to make it work with everybody, it's, I'm uncomfortable. I lay on top of my sheets with three fans blowing on me from Monday through Thursday when I stay there. When you have those kind of fans going, I have the same problem as you. I go, so everybody's freezing. I'm boiling. I'm just boiling. They're in parkas. I'm wearing a t-shirt and I can't deal with it. And when you're, yeah. and, and try to sleep with three fans, like, you know, you need your sleep. It's important. It's very important. And don't get me wrong with three fans and the window open because it's been cool outside lately down here, but it's summers right around the corner and June is going to be part of that. So that window thing ain't going to work. And they're come constantly complaining about how cold it is. I just, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of done with it. I'm just kind of just, it's just, it's just, to be honest with you, Dallas feels like I'm making a mistake by not, you know, you know, letting everybody it, right. get totally better with my knee. The problem is I'm not sure that any of the five are going to get to where their goals really are. They're not. 270 of Mildred is not going to evaporate in 30 more extra days. 300 with CC is not going to evaporate to 220 in 30 extra days. I mean, it takes time for these kind of things. That's not easy to do. So can, I give you, big, can I give so you my vote? I'll this, is not, this is not me dogging them. No, no. This is me saying you need more time to lose that kind of weight. You just can't lose it overnight. You know, it didn't take overnight to get there, and it's not going to take overnight to get out of there. So I'm feeling, I think I'm seeing and feeling that Dallas is really trying to have a great product at the end of the extra 30 days. But I feel, I feel with all my heart that at keep in mind, there's still 35 more days for the 90. So I feel like at that stage, the train rides over. I do, I just do. I, I personally do. There's nothing else I can get out of it. I'm in tip top shape. I feel great. I'm sober. I've got my whole mind changed. My calendar is swamped. Um, I'm doing great. And to do what he wants me to do, I would have to cancel 12 people in June. Can't do it. Because he acts like, well, let me call him. And I said, Dallas, of all people you know, it's still going to be me that no-showed and, oh, God, back was back. He's not doing what he said he was going to do and this and that. And da, 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 da. I said, it ain't going to be what Dallas said. It ain't going to be that, bro. I said, uh, I'm up with the heat. So, Buff, let's assume that 90 days is done. My vision of it was that this is going to lead to maybe, you know, a sequel or a spinoff show because I think in reality is – Everything I'm reading on the internet, there's four people in there, but everybody's asking for you, you know? And <laughs> right. And Dallas seeing this, seeing a Dallas and Mark show one on one, or maybe another wrestler, other wrestlers spinning it off, I think in the future, that's where I saw it going. Yes. And that is where it's going. Um, and he really wants me to, you know, to do the last. But here's the problem mm -hmm. I do the last. I would do the last month. I would do 30 more days in June. The problem is I've got several people that have contacted me on doing, I got one company called the Jay and Tony show. And if you look that up, it's a production company that did gigolos that did you uh, RuPaul that did uh, Jimmy Buffett that did all kind of uh, different, you know, things on, on camera that was documentary kind of style. And um, 
that was great. And now they're coming out with a wrestling one. And I was the first one they called and said, look, you know, is Buff ready? And I go, I'm ready to roll, you know? So, um, so they're really excited about that the whole group at Gigolos. They loved me during that run, which was just one appearance. Um, but still, they loved me. They were great guys. And, you know, they want to be part of this with me also again. But so there, it just it just seems to me without being ugly. It's just it's just time to. We did the 90 and love you. Thank you so much. And I'm out, you know. Thank you for enjoying today's episode of the Chosen Life Podcast. Go ahead and hit the subscription button below and the notification bell to catch all of our great shows. And remember to contact the Chosen Lawyers when you are ready for your next real estate and commercial transaction. Go to Cormans.ca.